Welcome to the Land Geek Podcast, your resource for information and tips to making money by buying and selling land. Let the Land Geek show you how to make a passive income by working smart, not working hard. Learn strategies and tricks to make money buying and selling raw land today. And here's the man that's going to help you do that, the Land Geek. Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, the Land Geek from your favorite niche website and real estate all things land, www.thelandgeek.com. And today, it's pretty special, not extremely special, just because we just had him on the podcast, but anytime I can get him, he saves lives, he he helps improve lives, he is just an all-around great guy. From Tammyland.com, Jeff Axton. I'm not going to do the Boston accent, you know, in case you're wondering, how are you, buddy? Uh, great, Mark. Thank you for the intro again. Yeah, and uh, great to be back a second time. Yeah, and and of course he's on vacation, as we speak. I'm again. looking at a beautiful hotel room. <laughs> Jeff, where are you now? I'm up at uh, Old Orchard Beach, Maine. We we love Maine, but uh, in in New England we only had a couple a couple days left, end of August here, and uh, you have to get those last few days in, you know. So, uh, cause it's going to be cold. Yeah. You're living soon. the dream. You're definitely <laughs> living the dream. I mean, I think we can all agree now that Jeff has lost all complaining privileges. <laughs> all right. Yeah. I mean, it's just, it's just done. So, yeah. uh, before we get into land and what's been going on, um, I do want to ask you about the Patriots hat. What's going on, <laughs> what's going on with the Patriots hat? Well, they won their, uh, last preseason game. Okay. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Uh, well, they'll have a great year this year. They are going to have a great year. Well, yeah, they, they always do. The head coach is great, you know. Um, Brady's still there. They have a, I love the uh, backup quarterback, Grappa, Grappa, uh, I can't even pronounce it. Some Greek guy, Grappa, Grappa Lago or something. Okay. But, I don't, yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, you know, it's funny. I, I just went to lunch with my buddy, my fantasy football partner. Yeah. And for 15 bucks, we bought a program. On fantasypros.com, and we ran like ten mock drafts because we're picking sixth. And so we wanted to see, okay, if we take Peyton Manning, if he's available, what happens? If we go running back, running back, what happens? If we go running back, quarterback, what happens? If we go running back, wide receiver, what happens? If we go quarterback, running back, what happens? Because you know this year it's there's the drop off in running backs is huge, and of course you got your big three in the quarterbacks. Which would be Manning, sorry, Brady. This is for fantasy, yeah. not wins. Manning, <laughs> Brady, like Manning. and Rodgers. So it was really interesting. But do you have any advice for me? Yeah, well, was a, yeah, you're right. I mean, there's, after those first three picks for quarterbacks, it's there's tons of quarterbacks. So you have plenty of time. Okay. You know, you're looking at fourth, fifth draft pick for quarterback. Right. If right. you don't get those top three. Okay, so like you mentioned, that's sort of that, I would wait. That's what I'm gonna. That's what I'm planning. I'm planning on picking my quarterback maybe third, fourth round if I don't. If I, with a six pick, you're probably not gonna get one of those guys. Yeah, I don't think Manning's gonna be on the board. Yeah. I think I think you could, I could get Breeze or Rogers, but then I'm not gonna get. I'm gonna get a Giovanni Bernardi. Yeah, there's a lot. Of, there's just around. a lot of good quarterbacks out there yeah. right now. I think. Yeah, but we could talk fantasy all day. You know, clearly we take it very seriously. So. <laughs> <laughs> but there's not as much money to be made in fantasy as there is in buying and selling raw land. How's it going with you? What's going on with your your raw land flips? Uh, it's going great. I have uh, let's see. I just sold one. This I sold one this week, and um, I think I'm going to sell another one. This person I'm emailing back and forth, and I'm trying to um, and really grow it. You know, I'm selling about two a week, okay. and uh, and it's. I have my virtual assistants all over the place, so I so I uh, I went in this week and found someone that's a U.S. based person, and um, she's helped me do with the, the, my emails and phone support, and uh, and she has a little bit of real estate background. She seems great so far. Oh, good. I'm paying a, yeah, I'm paying a little bit extra, but she's getting a lot done, and, and it's a good fit. I, I you know I, I interviewed about four or five of them. Skype and we are really in depth on finding this right person and um, so she's gonna help out and uh, I'm just trying to really get over that hump you know I, it's the business is running really good 
but I want to get it bigger and, and, and uh, you know, get a little bit more instead of two sales a week up it to four. Right, right. Now, you, now you're you doing know? two hours a day and you want to stick to right. that two hour time frame, which means that you've got to pay for a, a little bit of a bigger, more efficient, better team, correct? Exactly. Yeah. So I, so I kept on board a few of the people that I've been using, um, the lower paced one, lower, lower paid ones for, um, you know, doing, you know, different things, due diligence, little stuff, you know, data entry, things like that. Right. And that, um, this, this other woman's going to, um, kind of take charge and do the, 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 the heavy stuff, you know, the stuff that I, that I, you know, especially the phone calls, getting sure. someone out there talking on, talking to people and someone that's pleasant. And, um, so yeah, so, so I told her my, what my goals were and, and she seems pretty good so far. So that's my, that's been this week's, um, objective is to get someone on board and grow this business from selling two a week to maybe four a week. I love it. And, uh, the purchasing side of it is the same as usual. It's, it's, that's the, that's the easy part. <laughs> buying, 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 you know, right. raw land at a discount price is, once you get in the flow of this business, is very easy. Very easy. You know, you know what's so yeah. funny? You said that to a to a house guy, how easy it is. They would they like, what are you talking about? The market oh, is know. ridiculously competitive. We can't get any deals. There's no deals out there if you're a house flipper. But land is unbelievable. Uh, yeah, it's insane. I mean, I, yeah. I, I, I just sent out a, a batch of 150 offers uh, yesterday. Yeah. And I know, I mean, I'm busy now, and I know that's just going to, I know I'm going to get accepted offers. Yeah, that's going to give me another, probably another five or six offers accepted, and um, so that'll just get me more busy. But yeah, I mean, I'm buried. There's a, there's a reason we call the program more deals than you can handle. Oh yeah, and uh, these and it's funny these people I'm interviewing. Uh, I think three of them, two or three of them, were realtors, and uh, or have been in the past, and they couldn't believe I was selling two a week. They <laughs> they, they say you're selling two a week. I said, yeah, yeah, so it's, it's, you know, it's just normal. They just couldn't believe it. Yeah. And, um, yeah, they loved, everyone I talked to, they loved the idea, you know, but, uh, but yeah, so it's going well. It's That's going great. Well. That's great. So, you know, it's interesting because before the podcast, we were talking, and, I, you know, and by the way, every time I talk to Jeff, I say the same thing. When are you, <laughs> mo- when are you moving out west? When are you coming out here? And, uh, yeah. he's, he, he's got such a good gig going. It's and you got young kids. There's no way I'm gonna get you to move out here. But not not yet. <laughs> yeah. So we were so we were talking about the plan, and then you know it's an interesting concept because there's so many people I think that listen to this podcast, and they're in job. You like your job, right? You love it. Right. You love it. Yeah. But there's risk. Yeah, that's the only. That's the only. And yeah, yeah, it is. It says um, I like this. I like this. A lot better. <laughs> I'll tell you right now, it's right. Just, it's a lot easier. But yeah. uh, no, I do like my job. You know, I love going and in, going to work, and it's it's you know you're away from the family, but it's that little separation is nice to have. You know, going to going to work and, and you know being away from everybody for a little while, they, they appreciate you more. I think you know. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. And in case yeah. you guys don't know, you're you're captain at the fire station, correct? Yeah. Yeah. So they so um, I'm at a station. There's about 13 of us, and um, so I go in and, and it's fun. It's a it's a fun group of guys that that we um you know we, we all hang out together. We're all our, our, around our age, and um yeah, it's a good time, you know. And and then I do this on the side. Everyone has a side business there, you know. There's a lot of roofers and a lot of plumbers, electricians, and there's a couple others do real estate. But you know, I I, I exclusively do real estate. I've been doing that for a while. So so Jeff, do you get hazed a lot at the uh, fire station then because you're the only one doing real estate? Kind of, oh, oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know what? It's funny. I try, I try to keep that as quiet. Not many people have any idea. They don't have any idea what I'm doing, really. Um, they know I'm doing real estate, but they don't know I'm doing land. Only a couple people. I keep that totally separate from that. So um, when I go to the station, you know, I'm doing fire to fire stuff, and um, I really keep it separate. I really do. And, and it's kind of nice that way. You know, I, I don't really, I mean, if someone asked me about advice, how to do this business, I would definitely teach them and direct them where to go and get the material. But uh, most of the stuff I do is, is I, I keep it kind of separate. Sure. Sure. You keep it on the lowdown. 
Yeah, yeah, I just don't um And no one no one's gonna believe you anyways. You're like, Yeah, no. I made a thousand percent return on this one deal. No one's you know, gonna believe you. They're like, no. Yeah. Um, and it's funny, I, I had my, my virtual assistant by accident sent Tammy Land uh, out to all my friends on Facebook oh. uh, a few months ago. <laughs> and uh yeah, they did haze me. A couple of guys are like, Tammy Land, huh? What the heck is that all about? You know, and so here and there they will uh, you know, Oh yeah, Tammy Land, but him, they have no idea. <laughs> they is, have no idea. That is but, so uh, funny. But it is nice going into work, comfortable that you know what I I'm making more on that business, my land business, than at, than at the fire station. And if I ever wanted to just leave, I could. Yeah, okay. And, so uh, let's talk about nice that. nice about it. Because, you know, you kind of brought up the subject. You know, what's what's the number for somebody? Like how would someone who is working at this part-time, like when do you make the leap to say, okay, I can do this full-time or I can just still do this part-time and just quit my job, my soulless you know, terrible job and tell my boss to go shove it and then go live the life of my dreams and, you know, do whatever you want to do. So for me, it took 18 months and I quit my job and I've been doing this full time ever since. But I had my number at that time. I had one child. Now I have three. But when I was, uh, what was I, 30 years old um, at that time, you know, I needed to make at least 200000 a year to, you know, be relatively comfortable in Scottsdale, Arizona. And once I hit that point, I was like, okay, um, you know, worst case, I can always go get another job. But, you know, this thing's going pretty well. Let me just see how long I, I can keep this sustainable. And, um, you know, obviously the income jumped way up. You know, it was crazy numbers in 2005 and 2006. We saw a slight dip in 2007. 2008 happened, and uh, in 2009, and I was thinking, "Oh my gosh, you know, I'm making great money still, relatively speaking, but not relative to what I was doing." So I still, you know, didn't have to get a job, but my gosh, it it did hurt. Um, yeah. So I, you know, how would you counsel somebody, um, you know, to say, okay, at this point? Either how much inventory do you need to have on, on, uh, you know, owned or locked up, or how much would you have in notes and cash? Like, at what point do you think you would be comfortable telling somebody, yeah, you could, you could quit your job now? Yeah. Um, well, for me, I, I when I re when I reached the point that I was making as much money at the fire station as I am um, with the land business. At that point, it, it gave me a nice sigh of relief saying my, to myself, you know, that was my first goal. And just saying that, you know what, I go into work and it just gives you a whole different attitude about work, you know. So, uh, <laughs> right. you know what I mean? You just go in in the back of your mind, you're like, I'm making just as so much money on the side doing this. So, for me, when I started doing this, I did it part-time and I was thinking, wow, this is going to be a great little, little part-time job. And then when it started really, you know, the notes started taking off. Then um, and they they just slowly build and uh, or fast or whatever however fast you want to go with it I guess yeah I mean um, Bob Anderson's at twenty five hundred a month now I know he started four he's, months he's, ago he's, he's catching me <laughs> he's, <laughs> uh, but yeah no that he's flying that's that's awesome yeah, and uh, I'm gonna have him on the I, podcast and, and brag about all of this yeah I mean, yeah it's crazy. But, um, but yeah go ahead I'm sorry. Yeah, so so I don't know. I, I mean, it really depends on what you it, where you live and part of the country. I guess if you're uh, if you're single, if you have a family, um, you know, do you have a? Is there a reason for you to stay? For me, at the at the fire station, I, I get a pension. So the longer I stay, uh, the more money I make in my pension, which is really important. So uh, so yeah, so it, it depends on everybody's circumstance. If you're 20, 25 years old, you don't have a job yet, or you know, just starting out, and if it was between this land business and something else, I this land business, I would just go all, all out with this land business. Yeah. If you have if you have ten years on, and you're like, you know what, are you in the military or something, and you have another ten to go, and you get a nice pension, I'd probably stay with the military and just do this part time. Um, so it really depends on where you're at. If you really totally hate your job and and you don't see any pension or anything, then I'd go land business full time. That, that was that if it were me. 
Yeah. If yeah. I was miserable, if I was miserable and you know, cause it, cause why live life and be miserable? I'd rather leave a job, do this. And if you have to get yourself a little part-time job doing something else, because something I'm scared love. to death, Jeff, <laughs> that's why I'd rather be miserable and not so scared. No, yeah. no, but it's true though. Like I, I, like, right. I, I remember when, when I, when I was quitting, how scared I was and, uh, it, how I mean, I was miserable. I hated my job, and I hated the the corporate culture, and I hated the commute. I hated my boss. Um, I just you know it was just terrible. But I still stuck with an and I went an extra eighteen months longer than I probably needed to. And and because I just was like so scared and so and I was very conservative. But I, I agree with you. Um, I think it's much easier if you're if you're single, number one, or if you gotta have a spouse that has a pretty decent income. Um, number two, I think it's, you know, if you're miserable at your job, I, you know, I agree. Like, what's the what's the worst case, right? You go and you just find a better job. If if the land investing doesn't hit the way you need it to hit, right? Like, why right. be miserable? I right. don't know. Yeah, and um, you know, with for me, you know, I have a certain number in my head that I want to work at the fire station. I'll prob I'd like to retire a little early, and I know when I do, I'm going to be scared to death. <laughs> it's just right. I think it's just natural to be like that. And 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 I have a certain number that I have to hit with the land business, but I'm always going to be thinking, you know, geez, is this real estate market going to turn? Am I gonna am I gonna um, you know? lose all this stuff that I'm buying now and should I be doing cash deals? Should I be, I mean, I think you can worry yourself to death at any point. So I think you just have to just go do it and be happy. Whatever you, whatever's making you happy. Yeah. I think if you can survive 2008 and 2009 in this business, you can survive. We're not going to see that again. I mean, that was a, that was the worst real estate market since the great depression. I think the odds of us seeing that again in our lifetime are very, very small. What do you yeah, think? I, I agree. I, I think it's um, a nice little market right now. It's steady. I think I've said this before. It's just, I mean, I'm selling a few a few parcels a week. It's just steady. It's perfect. It's a nice equilibrium where it's easy yeah. to buy and it's easy to sell. Yeah, and I'm not making, you know, I'm making great, re I mean, <laughs> huge returns. <laughs> you know, I'm, uh, I, spent, I mean, I'm a little bit different than someone else uh, getting into this. A lot of people getting into this business are going to be looking for the cash deals. Right. It's always nice to get that little bit of cash, but I, I'm doing a lot of notes. So for me, you know. Um, thousand percent. Yeah, I, I have a couple that are 900 percent this year. Uh, most of them for me are in the seven to 800 percent. Yeah, range, and then I have a few cash deals that I got around a hundred to two hundred percent, not the typical three hundred percent that we're for. But um, you know, when someone's waving cash in your hand, cash in their hand, and you're like, you know what, it just right. looks good. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Spe know? Especially when you look at like a, a roaring stock market. You're like, the S and P is way up this year. It's like thirteen percent or whatever it is. You're like thirteen percent. Okay, I'm I'll be happy with a hundred percent. And then go right. on and, and then put a note on something, make a thousand percent. I mean, it's crazy. And I think we talked about this the last time. You get a ten thousand dollars a month passive income. It's like saving two point four million and having a four percent bond. That's it's insane. You know, I, one of my one of my uh, goals, I think, is it's either this year or I'm going to do it next year. I'm going to take a few weeks off and just spend, just just once, spend the whole monthly no income. For the month on just stuff. <laughs> it's one of those things that was one of our things when we started this. You know, we're like, all right, one of these. My wife and I were like, one of these months, let's just take every single seller financing um, income for that month and just go enjoy it. Right. Just go crazy for one month this year. So uh, can I can I can I come out with you guys? <laughs> I mean, we'll, we'll, you know, can you imagine the dinner we're gonna have? <laughs> Dom Perion. You know what? As long as you bring your note income, I'll bring my note income. Yeah, you know what? That would be one <laughs> fun vacation. Our, oh, yeah. our, first of all, I would never do it with my kids because I would spoil them so rotten. I think I they're spoiled rotten now. I don't think they're rotten. They're pretty spoiled though. But I know. I live in such an affluent area that you know they don't realize. Like it's just like that's the way everybody lives. Like their best friend has a ten thousand square foot home, 
because the dad's a neurosurgeon. It's like, <laughs> oh, yeah, you know, everyone has a private chef, <laughs> except, right, right, except for right. us. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm just a poor land guy. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so yeah, I mean it's all relative, but yeah, I mean that would be really fun. But you want to, you'd actually get stuff. You want to go on vacation? I don't know what. A, maybe you know I do vacations now though. With this, with everything I do on vacation is from my land business. You know, we're out here in, in beautiful Maine, and we just love coming up here. It's only an hour for us, and yeah. uh, and it's just yeah. I just any hotel, anything. I just put on the land business. Put yeah, but the land yeah, business. but there's no better feeling knowing that you're gonna have more money in your bank account when that you is left. The best. Yeah, <laughs> and then, that, I remember and that. Get back. We, went to, we went to Vegas to to your uh, conference. Right. You know, we went in eight days out to Utah, all over the place. And um, yeah, when I got back, I'm like, Tim, I go, well, look at our bank. It has more, more than when we when we left. I said, how can <laughs> how can we make it so we just you know do the four hour work week thing, just travel all over Europe, all over the United States, and just you know. And it's funny you could do that with this business. You're, you, Jeff, you could do it now. Single. You're there now. You're you're at the eight hour work week. You're doing it two hours. Wait, no. No, not I'm at the uh, – yeah, I'm at the – let's see. Yeah, pretty close. Eight hour hour. I'm at week. 10 hours. 10 hours a week I'm doing about – little – sometimes, yeah, about 10 hours. Yeah. Yeah, can you imagine some guy right now is working 50 hours a week and then, you know, throwing a couple hours for commute and he's uh, making no. half the money? I mean, I would hate you. The jealousy would be raging. Yeah. But I, I, but I don't. I, I, think it's, I think it's great. I wish I had started this business back in when I was in, the tw in my 20s. I'll I know. Right right now. I, I say that every time I look at Duran because he started seven years earlier than me. Wow. It's, I, was think, I was thinking of Duran today, by the way. Why? Because he always talks about how he's surfing and everything like that. I, I was out there in the uh, – I was body surfing today. With, I mean, one of those bo uh, boogie boards surfing. With oh. The, uh, and there were huge waves. Yeah. Yeah. There's something going on. Uh, but you're, he's, he's on the Pacific. You're in the Atlantic. Right. I mean, it's cold. Yeah. <laughs> it is freezing. But, uh, but yeah, I was like, you know what? I go, so this is what Duran does all day long, surfs. This yeah. is unbelievable. I loved it. I was like, I mean, I was doing body surfing, but the waves are huge. You know, uh, it was fun. We were at the beach all day. Yeah, passive income and surfing. Not, you know, nothing That's better. what, oh, man, the yeah. feeling. I, I would love to be, I'd love to be a, like, uh, surf all year long, you know? But, oh, yeah. yeah I mean, that's I mean, a whole different The thing stuff. is, like, you I mean, when you retire, how young will you be? You're not going to be, I mean, you're going to be vibrant. Oh, yeah. 49. That's Four, what my, yeah. uh, it, you know what? It's, and it's not even retirement. It's, it's more of retire from the fire department and do this, um, you know, continue, continue to do this at a, um, you know, 10 hours, 15 hours a week, something like that is what, what I'd like. Could you ever see yourself wanting to stop buying and selling land at any point? No, it's just, no. I mean, I, I, I just love the thrill of searching for property. I don't know. That's, that's my thing. You know, everyone has their own little thing. For me, I just love hunting, you know, and searching for that great deal. I love it too. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, even selling it, I don't get as excited anymore selling them. I, I do a little bit, but it's more like I'd, I'd rather find a deal than, you know, the selling's great, but I just, uh, the, the whole part of the process for me, my favorite part is, Searching for that deal, wheeling and dealing, getting that deal into contract, and buying it. Yeah, and that, I, knowing yeah. I have that, you know. I love. I, yeah, I, I think I'm a deal junkie in that respect, because, and I think you are too. I think you almost have to be in a way. Yeah. Um, and it, because it makes it so much more fun. I love, I mean, you know, but I love every aspect of it. I love the selling too. And I like the relationship aspect with my buyers and getting them to invest in more property. And watching their land portfolio grow, I kind of get a kick out of that as well. But you know, when I, you know some of the deals we get, no one believes me. I mean, you know, there's been deals where I've gotten property just given to me. I yeah. paid nothing for the property. Yeah, nothing. I had one the other day. A guy gave me one mark for. Um, I bought two forty acre parcels from him, and he says, "Geez, I have another one out in California." Um, you know, I'll just give it to you for a hundred bucks if you want. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> I, I mean, I, I looked at it real quick. I'm like, all right, I'll take it. A hundred dollars. Who would even say that? He could, he could have sold it to me for a lot more than that. Yeah. That's yeah. yeah I mean, it's he, crazy. He gave it to me. Yeah. It's crazy. And, and I think that's, that's kind of the beautiful thing about this niche in a way is that our sellers aren't emotionally attached. It's not like a house, you know? Right. Someone, no one's going to give away, I guess, unless you live in Detroit. But I mean, for the most right. part, no one's going <laughs> to give away a house. 
um, or any other type of asset for that matter that uh, I don't know. There's I don't know. I, I think about it all the time. Like what's what's better than this? And I to this day, I can't think of anything except for life insurance. Right. But life insurance is not much fun. No one wants to talk about it. No one gets a right. thrill out of it. Right. You know, um, and there's no there's no deal hunt in that. It's, you know, it's not like you're there's there's just there's that that primordial feeling of of finding something like something hidden of value and, and negotiating a great deal or, you know, solving someone's problem and just being clever enough to know how to do it and then going on the other side of it and marketing it and then selling it and just watching that at one time and then seeing that recurring revenue come in, it's amazing. It's an amazing feeling. Yeah, and uh, and like you said, people don't believe you. I, I, I was at the post office the other day, and uh, the woman at the post office, they all know me now at the post office, and um, she's like, so what are, you, what are you buying now, Jeff? And I'm like, all right. <laughs> I said 80 acres. I was doing a priority mill. I said yeah. 80 acres and another another hundred dollar piece out in California. She goes, "You serious? Are you serious?" I said, "She's like, you have any, you have any flown? Have you flown out there and looked at it?" I said, "No, no, I, I said, didn't even look at it." I said, "Google Earth, there's flat maps, you know. Um, I know the area, and they, and they just kind of shake their head, you know." Right, right, yeah, they exactly. Don't, they, don't, they can't wrap this up. They can't wrap their hands around it and think, "What the heck?" I can't imagine what goes on there. They must think of a widow or something. I don't know. Oh, yeah. They definitely do. They're, they're, de they're definitely talking about you behind your back. There's oh, no yeah. doubt in my mind. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, we're getting to that point in the podcast, my favorite point, where I get to put you on the spot. I hope you're unprepared. Jeff, my what mind. is your tip <laughs> of the week? All right. I like um, – there's a website called Symbaloo. Right, I'm, I'm going to go check this thing out right now. How do, how do I spell this? It's uh, O. Okay, so like like a symbol, O-O. -O. Yeah. But don't you spell symbol with an O? I think they're spelling it wrong. Or is that yeah, right? they spell it They spell it S -Y -M -B -A -L -O -O dot com. Symbolu. All right, let's check this thing out. And it's just that you can make it your home page is what I do. Oh, this and is great. You, yeah, it makes you it's your personal desktop. So, um, you know, you have all your favorite apps right in one – well, not apps. Your web, favorite websites in one place. They, they, you create a little app on there, and uh, it's just – you know, you save all your favorite counties that you're dealing with. Uh, you know, deeds.com, that's a, that's what I use. Um, Terapeak, any, any websites that you that you favorite. Oh, Jeff, I lost you here. You still with me? Yeah. So okay. this is a great website for uh, saving your favorite sites, bookmarks. Yeah, you know, Safari has something similar to this, but I don't think it's as robust, like in the Safari browser. Oh, um, okay. Yeah, this is a great tip. Great tip. Symbaloo.com, S-Y-M-B-A-L-O-O.com. You can add all our weekly tips into Symbaloo and quickly go to them. It's kind of like right. your it's like it's kind of like your favorites on steroids in a way. Yeah, and I use it. I use it as my homepage for for all my uh, land sites that I use. And this syncs with all your devices. Yeah, 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 because it's web based. So you, yeah, that's cool. Right. I'm gonna do. I'm gonna create my free account right now. Yeah, it was. Uh... I'm gonna register with Facebook. I, it's so creepy though. I hate doing this. I know, I don't, but it's, I don't. But it's so fast. It is. It's creepy. It's like who's right. following you, you know? I know. That's okay. Nobody nobody really follows me on Facebook anyways. All right. It's cool. I'm, I'm in. Uh, cool. I'm in. Thank you. Okay, so that's a great tip. I've got a tip of the week. And uh, oftentimes when I'm blogging or even if I'm marketing land and I, I want to make something – kind of look cool visually, I'm going to need a, uh, I'm going to need a stock image, right? And a stock photo. And there's all these sites you can buy stock photos. But just like Jeff, I love a deal. And I found a deal. Free. 
royalty-free stock photos, but good royalty-free stock photos. It's the, T-H-E, stocks, S-O-T-K-S, like stock photo, dot I-M. The stocks dot I-M. Check it out, and uh, it's really pretty cool. And um, I had another site, I know many podcasts ago. This is way better than that other one for free, royalty-free stock images. And uh, I hope you can use it in your land business, in your blogging, and building up your list, and all that good stuff. Jeff, are we good? We're good, Mark. We're good. Man, I can't, I can't thank you enough. You're taking time out of another vacation to <laughs> podcast. I, no, I, I love it. I love it. I really appreciate it. I, I, I hope you can feel the love. <laughs> and uh, I really do. And, and I've got nothing against the Patriots or Bill Belichick. Oh, thank you, Mark. We'll see how good they do this year. I, you know, if I can pick up Brady, I'll be, I'll be thrilled. Anyways, if you guys want to learn more how to make an incredible passive income like Jeff Axton, be able to quit your job, go to www.thelandgeek.com, download for free. The Passive Income Blueprint. Get the ebook, How to Avoid the Three Fatal Land Buying Mistakes. And of course, get this always informative and engaging podcast delivered each week to your email inbox. And look, give Jeff some love. <clears throat> He's only selling two parcels a week. He'd like to get to four. Check <laughs> out his wholesale land. Go to www.tammyland.com. And that's with one M, not two. Two E's. T A M E E land.com, tammyland.com, and put in the comment, love the podcast so much, I had to buy a piece of property from you. <laughs> uh, and then Jeff will give me my cut. And, anyways, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, if Jeff doesn't have anything you want, check out frontierpropertiesusa.com and you know, let us know how we're doing. Leave us a comment, uh, rate us on iTunes, it really helps us, and uh, we'd be greatly appreciated. Um, and, uh, you know, appreciate everybody out there listening. Jeff, anything else? No, no. Keep, uh, keep listening to the podcast. It's great. I enjoy being here, Mark. Thanks, Jeff. I'll, uh, I hope you're going to do this again sooner than later. Yes, hopefully. And I, and I'm probably won't, well, maybe I will be on vacation. Who knows? You're pretty pro <laughs> <laughs> probably. I, <laughs> okay. I, I, I wouldn't bet against it. All right, buddy. <laughs> Talk to you soon. All right, see you later, Mark. All right. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Bye. Thank you for listening to another episode of The Land Geek. Join us next time for more tips, secrets, and information that will help you succeed. Stay connected with The Land Geek on Facebook at facebook.com slash thelandgeek.